Yeah. Hi, my name is Rasmus Ole Rasmussen. I'm working uh, for the Nordic Council of Ministers and their department on regional development situated in Stockholm. Uh, but I am Danish of origin and I have been working in Greenland for a number of years. Great, Rasmus, thanks for joining us today to talk about uh, some of the research you do, uh, particularly around uh, in Greenland. And I'm um, particularly interested in what you see as the major uh, changes in population in Greenland over the past uh, few decades or so. Yeah, we happen to do that. Um, first of all, uh, I think uh, the age structure is very important uh, and an issue of concern uh, for population in the communities, in the villages, but also for the Greenland government. And, uh, among these issues, of course, the aging of the population, which I think as being an aging person uh, is very important to emphasize that this is a boon and a benefit for uh, society, but at the same time also a challenge because, uh, well, pensions cost money and, uh, and uh, you need uh, different kinds of services uh, becoming older. and. Uh, in the other end of the scale, of course, the question of uh, getting new persons, uh, persons being born. And uh, this is a major challenge in the case of Greenland, because uh, the birth rate has uh, declined, not due to problems with it, but due to priorities among young families. Uh, while you, let's say, 20 years ago, would have a family structure where you would be a father and mother, uh, one or two grand grandparents, and then you would probably have uh, five, six, maybe seven children, and uh, constituting the family. Uh, today, it's not the case. Uh, young people uh, would prefer to have uh, less children, and typically uh, for Greenland right now is uh, two, maybe even three children, but. That's uh, the general situation. And of course, it has consequences uh, over time because uh, fewer children, fewer youngsters, and fewer youngsters, uh, fewer in the workforce, etc. Et so it's an important process and a very well a recognized process for the politicians in, in the case of Greenland. And Rasmus, sorry, yeah. could I interrupt? Uh, just a question on that. So, do you think? Um, there's been a demographic transition and um, this question is particularly interesting because almost all of Greenland's population is indigenous to Greenland. That's right. That's, uh, and and that, that's an important uh, point. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, the question of uh, ingenuity uh, is uh, of course a matter of concern in the case of Greenland, but it's uh, an important point, namely that uh, you are not registered according to to, to um, uh, ethnicity, but you are registered according to birth, place of birth. It means that uh, most of the people living in Greenland are born in Greenland, but quite a number are born outside Greenland. It might be Danes like myself, or it might be Greenlanders, young Greenlanders going for education in Denmark, for instance, and then they will be registered as born in Denmark. So you will see that approximately seven to eight percent of the population will be born outside Greenland, while the rest are born and bred in, in, in the case of Greenland. And this already indicates the question of mobility as a very important issue. If you go back on when Greenland Home Rule was established in 1979, uh, there were limited uh, limitation to uh, the level of education you would be able to get in Greenland. So, if you wanted to pursue an academic uh, career or a technician a uh, career that needed special qualifications, you had to go outside Greenland, and usually it would be Denmark. Uh, and uh, not very seldom you would see that youngsters going to Denmark might find a spouse uh, and get married in Denmark. And then, the, well, let's say the circle is uh, constructed, namely that they go to Denmark, get children, 
who are then registered as being born in Denmark, moving back uh, at some point in time to Greenland. And again, we have this approximately 7 to 8 percent of the population who are born outside Greenland, but are still, according to the uh, United Nations definition, registered as indigenous uh, persons. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a number of years, uh, males went abroad getting some kind of education, returning and taking over some of the academic uh, administration positions in, in Greenland. Uh, but today, it's mostly the girls who go out, take uh, academic uh, uh, educations and return and become managers of both the home, the self-government, uh, the municipalities, etc. etc. And what from then, when a large proportion of the youngsters would go to Denmark and only some of them return, today we see that a substantial larger part of the younger women might return to Greenland, uh, while those uh, who are dominating the out migration from Greenland would be the grandmothers, because they would like, of course, to become grandmothers for the grandchildren, and most of them will be actually be in Denmark. Uh, while uh, men, for some odd reason, don't consider that being a grandfather might be something to pursue. Uh, luckily, we are different. Uh, in, in this sense, but a lot of the, the men, men stay back in Greenland. They have difficulties in as accepting that they might have to move out of uh, Greenland. They want to stay home where they are feel safe and sound and, and live up to, <coughs> let's say, traditional ambitions among, among the men to be on top uh, of everything and, and the kings of the, the hill. While uh, women, for some reason, doesn't have necessarily that ambition, they want to be in the core of the family. And uh, that, so that has had some implication for the, uh, for the mobility uh, in, in case of Greenland. And uh, what sort of impacts does this uh, trend of missing grandmothers have on, in Greenland itself? Well, it, it, it has uh, this impact that if, if you go back, back again 20 years, where there were more or less... Of course, women tend to live longer than men. Uh, they live more healthy lives, etc., uh, etc. Et um, and where there used to be a balance in this connection, the consequence is that there is actually lack of older women in, in, in Greenland. Uh, lack of uh, grandmothers and uh, it causes troubles for the older men who might like to stay back in their small village, let's say a village with uh, 50 percent uh, persons or something like that. And the problem is then who should take care of them, make sure that they are fed, etc. Et for some, again, odd reason, men tend, might, uh, tend not to be very skilled on the these issues, and it has led to the need of more uh, elder institutions, uh, not inviting very many uh, older women, or uh, not receiving uh, many uh, older women, but receiving still more older men, uh, simply because they might not be able to take care of them, and they don't tend to move to the core of the whole family with uh, the sons and daughters and grandchildren and etc uh, etc. Et mm. Now switching topics a little bit, yes. Rastus, if I may, um, <clears throat> Greenland is kind of treading a delicate balance between development and the environment and uh, maintaining traditional life and right. um, for example you've spoken at this conference about uh, a uranium mine uh, right. in Greenland. Yeah. Um, can you touch on some of the issues around uh, development in, in the environment? Yeah, please. Definitely. And, and, and of course, uh, there are issues related to the land take in connection with uh, doing mining. Because, uh, uh, for instance, uh, this specific uh, uh, mine or these mines that I mentioned uh, are situated in an area where there is sheep farming going on. 
you might not expect sheep farming in the high north, but nevertheless, there is a, a productive sheep farming taking place. And of course, there are some discussions about the, the land take uh, and to what extent uh, the local population would benefit from this uh, land take. And, uh, and um, of course, it offers uh, work and uh, that's another issue that's important in, in the case of Greenland because fishing has declined, uh, farming has to some extent declined and therefore mining is an obvious uh, opportunity and uh, um, it then creates problems. Uh, for instance, when you are processing the ore, especially if you are processing ore that contains, for instance, uranium, uh, the dust from the process might have implications on the, the uh, grazing areas for the sheep. And uh, it has caused some discussion and some troubles in, in parts of South Greenland. The other thing is that when, well, when it's no more productive uh, doing the mining, for instance, there is this case uh, with the gold mine in South Greenland, um, due to the declining gold prices, it stopped and left the landscape in a, in a state where, let's say, other activities might have been limited. For instance, uh, there are reindeer in Greenland and uh, these areas where the, where the, the, uh, the remainings from the, the mining activities might blur the areas and therefore limit the accessibility for the reindeer. And uh, recently, uh, last year actually, they decided to then move uh, musk oxen to these areas because uh, they are more capable in, in walking in stony areas. Uh, but then again, the question of the, let's say, the quality of the vegetation would be very important. And, and uh, so these issues uh, are, well, have consequences. You need to take care of the areas, but you also need to make sure that you have qualified uh, workforce mm. to, to get involved in the mining activities. Mm. And this is one of the uh, one of the issues discussed right now. Uh, to what extent would it be possible within Greenland to uh, generate the needed workforce? And uh, I might say that. Uh, Australia and this connection is involved in two of the three uh, mine, mining activities in South Greenland and of course uh, when you uh, go into such a, an, an endeavor you need to have presented an environmental impact assessment but also benefit plan for the communities that are involved there and that's uh, one of the major challenges to make sure that you actually have skilled workforce uh, among Greenland Greenlanders that can go in and uh, take care of, of the mining and, and processing industries in the area. Mm. And uh, related to that, um, I think Greenland is, is one of the few places you can go and kind of stand near the Arctic Circle and, and observe on a plaque or a sign where the permanent frost used to be. That's right. <clears throat> and then you can look out and see where it is now, and it's quite some distance away. Yeah. Um, would you like to comment on, on climate change and its potential well, impacts? Yes, and, 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 and uh, the way you, you present the question, I uh, might, uh, well, uh, contradict you a, a, a bit, because uh, <clears throat> the question of permafrost, buildings on permafrost, has been illegal for the last 50 years uh, due to uh, the problems with the extremely violent uh, wind that takes place. There is a special wind uh, called Pitarak, which simply has uh, well wiped out uh, villages totally uh, from 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 areas. And according to to then to the building regulations, you are not allowed to build at all on permafrost areas. You need to build on, on firm ground uh, and make sure that 
even the worst possible uh, wind situation wouldn't wipe out any of the, uh, the building. So, so the legal framework uh, has already taken care of a lot of those problems that that you are uh, exposed to in in, in uh, other areas. Uh, and I don't know. I can take uh, tell, tell just a, a little story. Living in Greenland, uh, we looked at uh, saw a, a, a television uh, program on on the, the extreme uh, harsh winds in Darwin, wiping parts of the Darwin away simply. And then, uh, of course, my children who were young there were very impressed uh, with uh, well what happened. And I could tell them that, well, actually today the winds are doubled that here in Nuuk, where we were living. Uh, and and uh, you wouldn't uh, see it because uh, the, the building law regulation had, uh, well, foreseen uh, such uh, incidences. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, therefore uh, well, they had, they, they saw the situation straight here and couldn't really uh, connect that uh, to, to the situation. And it goes, I think, for many issues related to, to climate change uh, because uh, uh, Greenland and Greenlanders had, had to be living with climate changes uh, which had been even more. Uh, Potential vulnerable than the ones get going on right now. We hear this about the melting of the of the inland ice. Uh, well, and then yeah, the water disappears into the oceans, and that's it. Uh, it doesn't uh, impact uh, Greenland life. Uh, the changes in in sea temperature were even uh, more fierce back in the 1920s. Before 1920s, uh, you did sealing, uh, seal hunting, etc., etc., but only limited fishing. But you had such an increase in sea temperature uh, around 1920, which led to the situation that caught in the, uh, the area, and it totally changed the whole uh, building structure because suddenly you needed to have uh, small plant processing plants and things like that close to the cod resource. So most of the villages still existing in the Greenland today were established in the 1920s as a consequence of the cod. So, so um, I'm totally aware of the potential uh, consequences of climate change outside Greenland. But the point is that it doesn't really affect Greenlanders. Mm -hmm. Is it not, though, opening up some new areas for access to mining and mining exploration? Mm, that's uh, something the, the newspapers tell, but it's not the case. Uh, all the mine areas have been accessible uh, for the last 100, 120 years and have been mapped and registered. So, so it's the impression that, well, if you have melting of the ice, but you have had that for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, melting of the ice and uh, ice flows and icebergs, etc., etc., and uh, it's possible to cope with that, and it has been com com possible for centuries. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rasmus, thank you yeah. so much for talking to us. It's been fascinating, and on behalf of my students, thank you for your well, time. Thank Great. you.